Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor Door Texan. Today we're going to do something a little different from my usual cooking videos. I recently shot a deer to refill the freezer for the year, and I wanted to walk y'all through how I butcher the hindquarter. This is where I get most of the meat that I use for roasts, steaks, jerky, and even ground venison. So, I've got a hindquarter and a knife, let's get right down to it. Before jumping in, let's point out the main muscle groups. Starting at the bottom, you have your shank, bottom round, the sirloin, and the top round that's over on the other side. My first cut is right along that large white seam of connective tissue. We're gonna work at peeling away the bottom round muscle first. And I think the word peeling is the best way to describe this type of knife work. Yes, you need a silly sharp knife, but it's less about slicing meat and more about pulling the meat away from the connections using your knife to lightly cut away the ties. A lot of the muscles will release with just the nudge of your fingers, so don't be afraid to start by working your fingers in between the connective tissue and prying the muscle free. Then, as you run across ligaments, silver skin, and other pieces that are just too stubborn for your fingers, that's when the knife comes into play. You'll also find that lots of these muscle groups are held in place with silver skin, like the one I'm pulling away from the sirloin now. You don't have to be perfect in removing the entire sack from each muscle at this point, because we're really more focused on separating the meat. That being said, silver skin is a great protector of meat if you're freezing all these cuts afterwards, but of course at some point you need to get all that off before cooking. As you continue to peel away the bottom round muscle, you'll come across what looks like a triangle of fat sitting at the center of the hindquarter. That's actually a gland and something that you don't want to end up mixed in with your meat whatsoever. So make sure to cut that out and dispose of it. The final cut taking the bottom round off is following yet another seam of fat and tissue on the bottom end of the hindquarter. Once removed, you'll find that you actually have two muscles in hand. One is the smaller tubular shaped eye round that was hiding within, and then the larger bottom round we were already talking about. Separate both and set them aside. Now we're gonna move on to the top round. Like before, you're simply just gonna follow those pre-made separating lines of fat and tissue and gently work your knife along the borders while pulling away with the other hand until the muscle is completely removed. Now it's time for the slightly trickier sirloin muscle. This muscle is the shape of a football, and imagine a football that's only half pumped up with air sitting lengthwise on a pole. That's essentially what the sirloin looks like attached to the bone. There's more knife work here, where you have to identify the bone and then very carefully cut the sirloin free from the bone surface while pulling the muscle away with the other hand. Just drag that knife as close to the bone as possible, following its entire length, and it will eventually separate cleanly. We're now left with the last two muscles, the upper and lower shank. Starting with the upper shank, you'll find that it's pretty easy to pry away most of it with your fingers and just a little bit of knife work. Only difference is that it has a large tendon attached to one side of it that you'll need to make sure and remove before setting aside.
Last but not least is the lower shank. Now, some people take a saw and slice straight through the bone, making discs of bone-in meat for slow braising dishes like osso buco. You can do that. But if you're feeling lazy and would rather tackle that at a later date, sharpen your knife and slice right into the kneecap. <laughs> then start rocking that leg back and forth, opening up your incision to expose connective tissue and eventually the ball socket itself. As it continues to open up, work that knife more and more around those sockets until it gives way completely. Job done. After about 15 minutes of knife work, you're left with the venison lower shank, the upper shank, the sirloin, the bottom round, eye round, and top round. Tons of excellent versatile meat that'll keep your kitchen busy for quite some time. That'll do it for this one. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy helping folks and talking food. If you want to see me cook up all this venison, as well as share other great recipes, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great content to come. All right, y'all. Take care.